Hi, this is Alan Rosenberg, and welcome to another edition of What I Got, a haul video. Uh, basically, out of the 200, approximately 200 albums that I bought since the end of last year through the beginning of this year, I figured I would show uh, some of the more most favorite albums that I've been listening to on CD uh, this year so far. Um, some are great, some are just okay, but uh, most are fairly memorable. Um, this is one that I found that's actually kind of cool. Stanley Clark, the basic collection. Stanley Clark, legendary bassist from Return to Forever. Uh, I actually saw him back in 79 when he played with Keith Richards and Ronnie Wood at Madison Square Garden as part of the New Barbarians. He's an amazing bassist, and this is just an excellent collection of uh, his best solo stuff. He actually crossed over Jazz Fusion with an album called School Days in the late 70s. Uh, Rock and Roll Jelly, great uh, tune that he does with Jeff Beck. Just great stuff. So if you like amazing bass and jazz fusion, you can't go wrong with Stanley Clark, and that's a great introductory to his um, discography. P.P. Arnold, the first cut. P.P. Arnold, a uh, legendary singer from Andrew Oldham's immediate uh, record label back in the late 60s. Um, she never really made it that big on her own, unfortunately, but this is a, a really cool collection of everything she did on the immediate record label including her version of the first cut is the deepest. Um, just a ton of stuff. She does some covers on the Rigby yesterday as tears go by to love somebody to the uh, Bee Gees cover. Really good stuff. Uh, you may know her today as a backup singer really for Roger Waters when he plays live. Um, a lot of people know I'm one of the world's biggest Wishbone Ash fans. And uh, last year they released their first new studio album in a long time called Coat of Arms with their new guitarist, Mark Abrahams. Uh, he has lit a fire in the band. I've seen them live twice with him and absolutely phenomenal live. Uh, this is a really strong Wishbone Ash album. Uh, I really like it a lot. I played it to death. I actually got it last year. I didn't want to talk about it until now, but I really soaked it in. Um, the only problem I have with Wishbone Ash since their golden days. It, listen, it's Andy Powell's band. He he kept the band going, and he deserves all the credit. He's released a, a slew of albums as Wishbone Ash with just Andy Powell as the main guy, and he deserves it. But the problem that I have, even on this album, is that Andy Powell, he's a, he's a decent singer, but he's not a great singer. And um, over the course of like an hour, 45 minutes, his voice just it just loses a little bit of interest. Wishbone Ash, if they ever had an Achilles uh, wound, it was their vocals. Uh, but Martin Turner was their main vocalist in their classic time. And at least his voice was a little bit different. Um, and on the classic Wishbone Ash, all the guys would sing in different harmonies. Under Andy Powell, it's pretty much just Andy Powell. Uh, he does the best he can, and it's fine. But... Um, you know, I just uh, wish there was a little bit more variety as far as vocals go. He actually did it once on an album called Illuminations, where he brought in Tony Kishman, who was a much better singer. And uh, that was a more interesting record. But it's a, a strong record from Wishbone Ash, Coat of Arms, uh, and it, it's a good return. Their last album uh, was also really strong. This is another album that came out that I picked up uh, last year, but I've been listening to it thoroughly. Live at Rock Palace, 1976. This is the classic Wishbone Ash that I just love, that I tell everybody about. Um, 1976, a great time for the band. They had released the New England album, which is my favorite Wishbone Ash album, along with the classic Argus. And this is just live, warts and all, no overdubs, just in blistering form. If you want to hear what Wishbone Ash sounds live, and yeah, there's some bum notes in their vocals or... Not perfect, but that's what 70s live rock is about. This is Wishbone Ash at their prime. This is two CDs and a DVD, and this is amazing. This is, when I talk about Wishbone Ash, this is the baby right there. Great, great stuff. Um, Lindsey Buckingham, a couple years ago, put out this uh, at Solo Anthology, The Best of Lindsey Buckingham. I'm a huge Fleetwood Mac fan, as most people probably are, and Lindsey Buckingham is basically the musical genius of that band. He's the arranger, and uh, he just has his stamp all over them. This is a great collection of the best of his solo stuff. This three is interesting. It's live, and uh, I have all of his solo records, and 
you know, some of his stuff's really quirky, and some of it's commercial, and some of it's just out there. But that's what makes him what he is. Uh, I also picked up the Eagles live at the Forum. I got mixed feelings about this one. Listen, uh, you know, the Eagles are one of the greatest bands of all time. Live, they're amazing. I mean... They're about as close to perfection live as you can get. You can barely tell the difference between them live and listening to the studio record, and that's what their fans want. So what's the issue I have with this? Well, you know, when Glenn Frey died, that was the end of the band, and they even announced it. Henley announced it. And then what does he do? He, he puts them back together again. Now, I kind of get it. You know, he puts uh, Glenn Frey's son, Deacon Fry in there, and he sounds great. He really does sound great. And he puts Vin Gill, Vince Gill in there, who's an amazing musician. And if you're just listening to this album, yeah, they sound phenomenal. But I got to be honest with you. My, my heart is like, you know, when does it end? And it's not just the Eagles. You know, it's all these bands, Foreigner. And, uh, you know, when does a band stop becoming the real band? And it's just really just uh, almost a tribute band because they have one guy left or... Yeah, I know. They still have Joe Walsh and uh, Don Henley, obviously, and Timothy B. Schmidt. And it's still the Eagles, and they sound really good. But I don't know. It's just something about it annoys me. But I guess you can kind of say it about this. So this is The Outlaws, one of the all-time legendary southern rock bands. And they released an album, I guess, last year called Dixie Highway. Now, The Outlaws, well, most of the guys are deceased in that band except for pretty much uh, Henry Paul, who is the leader of this band. Now, Henry Paul was originally in the Outlaws. He left and then um, then came back. Well, he went left, went solo, had a really good solo career, and then did Black Hawk, which is a, a country band that he had huge success, and now he came back to the Outlaws. And he put this album out. Um, and Ma Monte Yoho, the drummer, was originally Outlaws too. So the other guys, the other guys in this band were not originally. But it, it certainly sounds like the Outlaws. It is Henry Paul, and Henry Paul is an immensely talented guy, and I like his voice. And this is an amazingly strong record. This may be one, one of my favorite albums this year so far. I mean, it's just top to bottom, tremendous. Uh, the Outlaws are a great band. They really rock hard. They also have the strong country in here. But uh, listen to the title track, Dixie Highway, Dark Horse Run. Rattleshake, Snake Road, Lonesome Boy from Dixie. I, I think Charlie Daniels did that originally. Uh, Showdown. This is a Making Memories. This is a phenomenal album. Um, you know, is it really the Outlaws? Well, I, I guess it is. They, they do sound great. This is an interesting album I picked up. A band called RTZ, Return to Zero. RTZ is Barry Goudreau and Brad Delp of Boston. After Barry Goudreau got thrown out of Boston by Tom Schultz, uh, this was one of the projects he did with with uh, Brad Delp. Uh, it's really dated, in my opinion. It's got that 80s sound, and it's reminiscent of Boston. It's kind of Boston-like. Uh, but it did have a hit. That song, Until Your Love Comes Back Around, boy, that's just a hit single, and it was a hit single all over it. You know, it's pretty good if you like Boston and you like uh, Brad Delp. That's a good listen. Michael Kiwanuka, I'm a huge fan. I finally picked up his first album. He's got three. I have the other two, Kiwanuka, um, and uh, both of his other albums were my top were top three albums for me. I do my best of albums of the year. Two of his albums in two different years went top three. This is his first album, and I finally picked it up. It's phenomenal. This guy is so talented, and I just love his voice. I love the production. It's got that 70s soul production. You, it just it sounds like you're back in the 70s. It's just beautiful. This guy is a super talent, and I love it. I found this is cool. I'm a big fan of Hot Tuna, and I have all their albums, and Yoma. But this is a really cool collection called Trim to Burning. This is a UK import, and I had never seen it before, and I found it out hunting. In the field, and I found it. And this is a great collection. I mean, look at that. Water song, hit single number one, sleep song, Serpent of Dreams, one of my favorite hot tuna songs, Horror and Crystal Ball, just watch the North Wind Rise. Great stuff, hot tuna. Really cool collection, that one is. 
And two more I'll show you. Um, I have everything Bob Dylan's done and all of his archive albums, but I finally picked up this version of the Bootleg series. This is volume 15, 67 to 69, Traveling Through. This one's an interesting collection. Um, I love the first disc, which is, you know, outtakes and sessions from John Wesley Harding and Nashville Skyline. Just great. Uh, Dylan's voice was never better. I mean, it's it's damn right pretty. You know, Lay Lady Lay. A lot of people wouldn't even recognize his voice as Bob Dylan. He's really a singer here. Um, the other two discs are really interesting. It's the Johnny Cash sessions, including stuff from the Johnny Cash show when Dylan was on with Johnny Cash. Um, I really like Johnny Cash, too. But the only thing about this album is Johnny Cash's voice. He's so big and so powerful, and his voice is so overwhelming that you kind of feel on those second discs that it's more of a Johnny Cash disc than a Bob Dylan disc. At least that's my feeling. I've listened to it a bunch of times. But it's phenomenal music, and it's great. And uh, these archive uh, bootleg series that Dylan's people have put out, there's nothing better. No artist has done a better job of putting out their archives than Dylan and his people. Uh, they're just amazing sets. This one, a little bit different, but uh, really enjoyable. And finally, I found this CD for really cheap. Uh, Sons of Anarchy, one of my favorite shows of all time. And the music in that show was great. And I picked up the soundtrack because I dig really good soundtracks. And I didn't know what I was going to make of this because it's basically a covers album. Katie Segal sings a couple of the songs. This is one of the greatest soundtracks I have ever heard. And I think I've listened to this album more than any of the other albums I just showed you so far this year. Um, it's just incredible. Uh, my friend Sandy had uh, told me about Gimme Shelter from Paul Brady, and he thought it was better than The Stones. He's, he's crazy. It's not even close. But some of these other covers, of course, the title track, This Life, of the title track of the show is, is really cool. Um, Son of a Preacher Man, Katie Segal sings it almost straight, but in the, the, the bridge they kind of slow it down, which is interesting. But the other versions of these songs, Forever Young, the Dylan classic, uh, Fortunate Son is done as like an acoustic instrumental ballad. It's, in, it's so different. Uh, Anvil does a cool cover of the Who's classic Slip Kid, which I love. There's a blazing rock version of Girl from the North Country, Dylan classic. Uh, Someday Never Comes, a Fogarty classic. It's just so cool. Katie Sedow does a great version of Leonard Cohen's Bird on a Wire. And it's all done by the same band, so it, it sounds like a band's album. Um, if you like soundtracks and you love uh, Sons of Anarchy, you got to get this CD. It's just killer. And it's probably my favorite, most listened to CD so far this year. So those are my favorite CDs so far this year. Today, I did something interesting. And I bought a stack of 45s. Now I'm not going to bore you and show you all of his 45s. And I'm not really a huge 45 guy, although I have probably have about 500. So maybe I am a bit of a 45 guy. But I found some cool 45s I thought you might be interested in seeing if you like 45s. This is a cool one. You don't see Rick Wakeman singles too often. And certainly not as pictured this, but from his album Rhapsodies. This is a cool uh, 45. I always uh, did getting uh, UK import 45s with the small hole there. And this is a John Entwistle, of course, a legendary bass player from The Who. And Too Late to Hero is an amazing song that he did. It was the title track of one of his albums. And this is a 45 from England of Too Late to Hero. You may know Steve Hillage, legendary uh, guitarist from the 70s, from Gong. Uh, you know, highly progressive, psychedelic kind of guitarist. And here he does a Beatles cover of Getting Better. UK 45, that was kind of cool. I found some cool punk rock CDs. I don't even, uh, 45s, I don't even know who this band is. Dirty Looks? Maybe somebody out there knows who they are. But it's kind of a DIY. It's got like a little photocopy artwork in here telling you who they are on that one that's kind of neat here's another one i found insolentes tras de nada i haven't heard this yet i bought these today but interesting uh i'm a huge fan of patty smith and this is uh import of people have the power great stuff uh 
Back in 1985, Bill Wyman and the Stones put together Willie and the Poor Boys as a charity, and they did a cover of These Arms of Mine uh, with Paul Rogers of Bad Company and Free singing it with Jimmy Page on guitar. If you've never heard this version of These Arms of Mine, you need to. And this is the 45 of them from Willie and the Poor Boys by Bill Wyman. What else? Uh, I always collect any imports of Elvis Costello, and this is Let Them All Talk, cool 45. Uh, Mark Knopfler, I'm a huge Dive Straits fan, another import 45 from the theme from the movie Cow. He did the soundtrack, of course. Old Elton John, don't go break in my heart. Kiki D, with the picture sleeve, why not? Uh, Paul McCartney, Take It Away. Not one of my favorite McCartney songs, but from a good record, Tug of War. Um, I'm a huge fan of Jay Giles, and I have all their albums, except for the one when they kicked Peter Wolf out of the band. They released another album. How do you release an album without Peter Wolf in the band? But they did, and I don't have it. And I saw this single. This is the single, Concealed Weapons, from that album. And you'll see Seth Justman, the keyboard player, was leading the band because he, I guess, took control from Peter Wolf. Not a great song, but kind of a cool 45. Um, Dire Straits, one of my all-time favorite bands, UK import of Tunnel of Love. This is actually kind of interesting because Tunnel of Love is a long song, and it's one of my favorite songs of all time by anybody. It's from the making movies. And look what they did. They split the song in half. Tunnel of Love Part 1, and then the flip side is Tunnel of Love Part 2. Really not meant to to be on a 45, but I couldn't pass it up because I'd never seen that before. What else? Pete Townsend, UK importer, Rough Boys. Pretty cool. And one of my favorite bands, The Kinks, Predictable. UK import of that. Great, great funky track. Gotta love it. The label says Conk Records and Tapes, The Kinks. Pretty cool. Um, what else did I get? This is a neat one. Excerpts from Marisol, the first international Puerto Rican pop festival. And this is, if you can see that, Jay Giles band, Jonathan Edwards, and Emerson Lake and Palmer doing Take a Pebble and Lucky Man on a 45, not for sale. Kind of cool. And last but not least is this. You ever hear of this band Coven? Well, I found this vinyl album called Blood on the Snow. It was on Buddha Records. And this band apparently were real Satanists, like devil worshippers. And I also found a 45 Coven. I need a hundred of you. Buddha Records. And the flip side is Blood on the Snow, the, the title track. I haven't heard this because I'm kind of scared. <laughs> but it's supposed to be pretty good. But I'm kind of scared. I don't know. I'll have to listen to it with the lights on. With other people home, I guess. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this What I Got uh, video. Um, I just have about 150 albums I bought last year. And this year that I haven't even gotten to. So I'll get to them eventually. And hopefully you'll be tuning in. If you enjoy my videos, please hit subscribe. Please tell people. Um, and hopefully I'll just keep making them. And hopefully you'll enjoy them. And thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.